Hello everyone, Creature Princess here, and welcome to A Face That Isn't Yours. Uh, it's a horror game, like text-based horror game. There's not really any sound to it, as far as I know, so it's just gonna be weird silence and my voice. So here we go. It is Sunday. You woke up to the sound of your phone buzzing. You look at your watch. It reads 5.30 a.m. You wonder why your phone buzzed. Uh, open messages. Lethargically turning over with an outstretched hand, you fumble for your phone. You feel the drafts of the paper that you have yet to finalize, folders which you should have been using, and pens and pencils scattered, crowding your desk. You finally feel the edge of your phone and look at your messages. Uh... Gmail? Fast app scholarships. Four scholarships need your application. See them now and click the link below. It's obviously a scam. You block the email. Other messages. A uh, message from brother. You open the text from your brother. Hey, can you clean the mess in the kitchen for me? I woke up late for work. Thanks. You stare at your phone with annoyance, hoping that you'll be able to find an apartment soon. Your phone buzzes. Look at messages. Calendar notification. Finish the final draft for a literature class. You look over to your desk and slightly regret deciding to take the course. Other messages. News alert. You open the news alert. New York news alert. A woman and a man in their 30s have been found dead in their apartment. Burn marks were found all over their bodies. Proceed daily activities with caution. Eh? Burn marks? Was there a fire? Open your phone. Your phone buzzes again. Open message. Ow. You look at your phone and see that it's another alert. New York news alert. A couple of kids surrounded by mirror shards were found disfigured at Central Park. If you've seen any suspicious activity, report immediately and proceed daily activities with caution. Mom, do you know about this? You text your mom to ask what's happening. No reply. Text your brother. You text your brother to ask if he knows anything about the incidents. He doesn't reply. He must be busy at work. Go to the kitchen. Placing your phone in your pocket, you walk into the kitchen. You're horrified as you find cereal all over the floor and orange juice that leaks down from the small opening of your fridge. Then clean it. You sighed and then went to go to get a broom and towel. It takes you a while, but the kitchen's clean now. I don't usually eat breakfast, so let's make some coffee. You take a Dunkin' Donut cake cup. And... Are you sponsored by Dunkin'? And Keurig? Because I like the brand naming here. You take a Dunkin' Donut cake cup and place it into your Keurig. Once you finish brewing your coffee, you bring it to the coffee table. Let's turn on the telly. You turn on the TV and go on the news channel. It's another alert message. New York news alert. A woman was found in her apartment with her skin peeled off. Identity unknown. If you've seen any suspicious activity, report immediately and proceed daily activities with caution. Search the web. The woman was holding a broken hand mirror. You shake your head. That's weird. uncertain. You feel uncertain about the whole situation. Should you be worried? You brush off the uncertainty. Go to the bathroom. Wash your face. Stop freaking out. It's nothing. You stare at yourself and contemplate how to fix the bed hair. After a moment, you start to feel dizzy. You don't know why you're dizzy. Looking down and with your hands on this counter, you hold yourself and stay still for a moment. You look up and what you see horrifies you. It's you that stares back at you, but at the same time, it isn't. You keep staring. You stare at the figure before you. It was as if your reflection was watching you, analyzing you. Keep staring. You stare and stare and watch as the reflection begins to deform. The skin begins to sag. Parts of it begins to rot. And blood begins to flow from the rips in the skin. Staring contest! And you still stare, even as your own face begins to do the same. You're in shock as you feel a mixture of sensations, the sagging of your skin, the pungent smell of rotting flesh, the warm blood that oozes down your face. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna stop that then. You want the pain to stop, but it doesn't. You try to cry out, but you can't. You look at the mirror and see a sinister smile that stretches from ear to ear on the face that isn't yours. I don't want to die. As your consciousness fades away, you feel those malice eyes on you. I don't want to die. That was your last thought before you couldn't feel anything at all. It's one in the afternoon. From reading all the news articles, you understand what's happening. Don't look at yourself in mirrors. You know. You know what you're not supposed to look at. You're running. You I think it's the wrong form of your. Run faster. You run faster. A panic that you haven't felt before. You run past the crashed vehicles and screaming people in agony. 
breathing heavily, you finally arrive at the stairs of your apartment. What? Catch your breath? You put your hand on the railing, holding yourself from collapsing while taking deep breaths. Breathing heavily, you finally- Excuse me? Hello? Okay. You finally arrive at the stairs- uh, Rise the stairs- Walk away? You're scared. You're panicked. You thought you could handle it, but now you're not sure. I don't know what to do. Go inside. Don't be a bitch. You take a deep breath and gather the courage to go inside. You walk up the stairs into your apartment door. Room 305. You stand in front of your apartment door. Placing the key in your pocket. You Okay. You walk into your apartment. You look at the shoe rack. His shoes are still here. Go into the kitchen. You walk into the kitchen. The mess you made this morning has been cleaned. Oh, you're the brother now. Worry. After seeing the cleaned mess, you know he was already woken up. Call his name. Drew! Drew! You called as you're walking to his bedroom. You smell something odd. The door to the bathroom was left ajar. You slowly open the door, and you see a silhouette of a body on the ground. You cry out. The face has been deformed, dry blood covering the body and floor. You kneel down. It's not him. It's not him. It's not him. You're in denial. You don't want to believe it. And as you see the watch he wears every day and night on his wrists, as you recognize the patterns on the PJs he hasn't changed out of, you hold the body close to you and weep. You wake up with the sunlight beaming from the bathroom window, with the harsh reality that still lays next to you. You take a moment longer with your brother. You don't want to leave, but you know you can't stay. Memento. You take Drew's watch off, wiping it clean, wearing it around your wrist. You take one last look at Drew before you exit the bathroom. We're gonna close the door. You close the door behind you. You walk into your room and look out the window. Your view is partially blocked by the ladder of the fire escape, but you can still see the streets filled with cars and bodies. Kitchen. You walk into the kitchen. Get some food. There's not much food since you and Drew usually eat out. You find a pair, pack of granola bars and take it with you. You place it in your bag. Before you could begin searching, you hear knocking. Stay still. You stay very still. You hear the knocking again, but it's closer this time. Did you lock the front door? You walk quickly but quietly to the door. As you fumble for the key in your pocket, you hear knocking. It's very close. There's a jingle of keys and then a creak. You can barely hear someone in a hushed tone. Won't be happy here either. Lock door. You take your keys out and lock the door with a click. You freeze. Silence filled the area and it felt like an eternity. You hear the sound of thumping from the apartment next to you. Fire escape. You put the fire escape in your room. Oh, my nose. You grab your backpack on the living room floor and throw it over your shoulders. You hear the rattling of your door as you sprint to your room. Don't you dare run from me, you hear a man say. You shut the door as you enter your room and lock it. Fire escape. You pry the window open as you hear the pounding on your door. You run down the flight of stairs and climb down the ladder. You don't look back. Where are you? You move quietly over in between cars. You hear footsteps that echo between the tall buildings. Surprised, hide, look. I don't want to look at whatever the fuck is chasing me. So we're just gonna... Surprised? You jump with surprise that you see a woman with ragged clothes lump limping towards you. Do I help? I'll be nice. Help. You start walking towards the limping woman. Hey, do you? Your voice gets... Your voice cuts off when you see multiple figures wearing black clothes coming up around... From around the building. Hide. Hiding behind a car, you hear a gunshot and a thud. The limping woman is now on the ground, desperately trying to crawl away from the figures. How many? You count seven of them. Hiding behind a car, you hear a gunshot and a thud. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, who? You don't know who they are. Watch. No, please, don't make me. I regret it. I regret leaving. I'll join again, please. You don't understand what the woman is talking about. You take a peek and you see the figures grab onto the woman. They hold her down. One of the figures holds onto a cloth object. I'm staying where I I'm not even gonna get close. He's the cloth object being placed in front of the woman. She struggles, but to no avail. I'm staying where I am. Do not make me get closer. The figure with the object seems to be saying something. You could only make out the Church of Satan deceived your cheap conviction, great demons. He reveals what was hidden under the cloth. A mirror. Stay hidden. The woman struggles to break free. She begins to scream in agony. The reflection of the sun in the mirror starts burn- starts burns her skin turning it red as it starts to peel, and spots of white and black charred skin begin to form. You can't bear to watch and look away. Run. 
You start to panic. I have to get out of here. As you get up, you hear a shout. Hey, someone's over there. Keep going. You better run, but your legs are numb from squatting for too long. You trip. Shit. The figures are closing in on you. You get up and start to run, but you feel something hit the back of your head with a thud. You fall to the ground. Wake up. You wake up in an unknown room. Let's pitch black aside from the crack of light the door provides. Look at the watch. The watch reads 11.37 p.m. You wake up in an unknown room. It's pitch... Okay. Uh, peek through the door. You look through the door. You see people tied up on the right and on the left figures stand in black cloaks. The Church of Satan has had accepted you with open arms, gave you shelter, food, and water, yet you've all deceived us with your cheap conviction to our great demons. You wish to leave? I don't think so. Watch. You watch someone bring in an object covered by a cloth. You don't deserve the authority the demons have given us. It's truly a pity that you can't see the true justice of this world. He pulls the cloth. Don't know way. You turn away. You don't want to watch the deaths of all these people. Shiny object. You see something shiny on the ground. Dig it. You're drawn to it. Your hands feel the sharp edges in the flat surface of the object. You know what it is. Discourage. You don't want to live in a world like this. You look at Drew's watch. I'm sorry. A way out. You've already found your resolve. you found peace in taking your regrets with you. You look down and into the mirror. Oh. Okay. So, uh, as the brother... So, basically, as, as New York is, uh, things are going wrong, it seems. Uh, and it seems that... Oh, God damn, why do I yawn so much? Um, it seems that if you look into a mirror, a demon uh, kills you. So his brother died. I assume his mom's also dead. And then he ran back home. And then, and then Satanists kidnapped him. And then we're trying to kill him, and then he killed himself because he'd rather kill himself than be killed by other people. What? Yeah. Um, interesting. Uh, would have been spookier with some ambiance, not gonna lie. Some spoopy, spoopy sounds would have been nice, but for what it's worth, pretty good. Uh, grammar, I don't know if the person who made this is like a native English speaker uh, or if English is their second language. There were some grammar issues uh, which kind of stopped the flow of the story, but it's not anything to get worked up over. Uh, still nice. I like the concept. I like the, the art for the background. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that was... What was it again? Because I'm, I'm bad at remembering stuff. A face that isn't yours. There we go. Because I'm super bad at remembering stuff. Uh, so yeah, that was A Face That Isn't Yours. Uh, nice little text-based horror game. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm very tired. I've recorded now for like two hours. Um, and I would like to take a break but thank you guys so much for watching uh if you guys like this video leave a like if you would like to see more hit subscribe and i will see you all in the next video of whatever i make stay awesome everyone Bye bye